Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethum and welcome back to another episode of Sea Dogs to Each His Own. So in this episode, we will be carrying on with the mission where we left off. We have managed to capture one ship. We still have two more to go. Hopefully my Corvette can last that much. And as you know from the previous episode, I am not really geared up to be in a position of captaining such a ship. So I am at a disadvantage. Anyways, if you folks enjoy this episode, please don't forget to support me by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And why not check out some of my other videos here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. So at the moment, I need to deal with that other ship I have lost a lot of health as you can see hopefully this little Zebek here won't get itself into trouble I do want to sell it if I can so I'm gonna tell it to stay there that thing is pretty darn fast I'm gonna try and deal with that ship's crew oh it's coming for me really fast that's uh, that's quite worrying Oh, Oh, that hit the Sebek. <laughs> That's not good. And I'm starting to lose cannons. Just the kind of thing you want when you are in a hardcore battle. Oh, boy. I mean, on the bright side, I am making short work of whatever that ship is. I think that's a career lugger. So I am making short work of that ship's crew. I'm going to try and catch up with it because I will want to board that one as well. Obviously, I don't want to get close to that big thing. Because if I do, that thing is going to do a tremendous amount of damage. And I do want to take the blunt of the shot off that career lugger. That would be advantageous. I don't want to lose the visa back. That obviously causes a problem. As you can see, I am steadily and slowly dying. So I can't take many more hits at the moment. And I should have brought with me some some timber and some sailcloth to be able to repair in battle. I don't know why I didn't do that. But that is a thing you might want to do when you do this quest. I'm chasing this guy. Oh. I just see bits and pieces flying everywhere. So that should be okay for us. We do have the musket salvo, which will help out. And that was that was mighty quick. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, let's loot the place, see what we have. I'll take that. So Obviously, my ship is now <laughs> nearly dead. I don't know exactly how I'm going to deal with that uh, East Indian, I believe it's called, the model of the ship. So, I have no clue how I'm going to deal with that, because that's got a lot of firepower. I barely have any health left. So, I've got my work cut out for me. I mean, there is an option of going back to, say, I don't know, swapping to the Sebek. That might be a possibility. Although, saying, saying that, <laughs> the Sebek won't be particularly fast, and that's taken some damage as well. Okay, nothing here. Oh, okay, never mind. It's so nice that I am doing a decent amount of damage now. <laughs> Whoop. There you go, sir. Oh, 
Okay, he's not got left. Uh, well, what I meant to say, he's not got a lot of health left. So let's see what we have in your cabin, sir. What do you have? I'll take the healing potions. Anything here? Yeah, I'll take that as well. Of course, we do want as many healing potions as we can get. They are always useful. Oh, more healing potions and some money. Okay, we'll get that. And last place to check. Well, that was quite, quite good. We've got quite a few healing potions. And obviously, you don't have anything. All right, so it was a war schooner. Mm, yeah. Anyways, he doesn't have any any planks and he doesn't have any sailcloth so we're not doing that good we still have that uh east indian to sort out so i'm going to set a captain on the ship i'm going to set you or uh i guess i'll set you as a captain i need to avoid a collision with that thing because obviously my captain is not very smart and he will want to try and hit me because, hey, why not, you know? Dude, do not damage that ship. Do not damage that ship any more than it is. Oh, this is going to be a tight one. You got to love these captains. Uh, these officers, they are very smart. I mean, there was no way I was going to move out of there without damaging my own property and I obviously can't take any hits from that thing so I'm going to try and I guess try and damage it from here yo don't do that to my ship that's my property get off it Why is that officer just going straight for, the left side, ready to for that ship? It's just ridiculous. You don't do that. Oh my goodness. The AI in this game, I swear. Well, actually, no. The AI that you fight against is good. It's challenging. The AI that you get to help you, well, as you can see, clearly not very good. Not very helpful at all, so... Now, if I could get that prince, that prince, I keep calling it, I keep thinking it's a prince, but it's a uh, East Indian. If I can get that East Indian to go towards the fort, that would consist a... That would be actually a major, major, major advantage for me. Hopefully, if he does do that... Oh, he's going. He's going. Go on. You can do it. That's exactly what I want. He's going right in the location that I want him to be. That way I can use the fort as backup. And now I just need to stay out of his range. I should probably save. It would be a very wise decision for me to just save. The left side, ready to fire. Yo, don't turn. No, this is gonna hurt. The right side, ready to fire. Oh my lord. Okay, I thought he was gonna shoot at me. Ha. Whew. That was a big panic. I'm going to make a separate save here, just in case things go wrong. The right side, ready to fire. Let's 
So my plan now is to obviously hide behind this loop and hope that this loop can take most of the incoming cannonballs. Oh, losing that one cannon. See exactly what I mean. If I hide behind the sloop, I can hopefully do damage to that ship, and the sloop should take most of the incoming damage. There is a trick to this, and one thing I don't want to do is accidentally hit the sloop. Otherwise, we'll have the fort on us as well. So as you can see, the fort has done some damage to that ship. It is on fire and it's definitely not from me because I am shooting with grape shot. What the heck is this captain of the sloop doing? I don't think he likes to be a human shield. <laughs> I don't think he's happy with my idea. I mean, on the bright side, that ship is very nearly ready to be boarded. So I think I should start making my way towards it. Uh, I do want to avoid a broadside from that because it will hurt. It will hurt or it will sink me, one of the two. Okay, that was lucky there. I mean, luckyish. I, I kind of assumed that he couldn't shoot his cannons because obviously he's not got enough crew to reload fast and at the moment he seems to be gunning for the fort and I'm happy with that I mean, I am going towards him, but I am taking my time. I still want to make my fight in terms of boarding as easy as possible. So I do want to clear out most of his crew before I actually go and board him. Ooh, that hurt. Yo, no broadside, son. Stay away. Ah. <sighs> Nearly sunk me there, though. <laughs> there we go. Also, because obviously he was within the fort's range, I would assume that the fort has also taken out most of that ship's cannons. I'm going to try that one again because the boarding did... Uh, I was actually tempted to try that boarding again because it's taken a long while. And I think the crew that the ship had were quite skilled. But I was very nearly tempted to try it all over again in the hope of getting a uh, less skilled crew to fight against. But I don't think I lost that many sailors. I mean, I lost a few, but all in all, it's not that bad. Besides, I won't be keeping the Corvette anyways, so I don't even know why I'm bothered. I'll be swip, uh, swip, switching to the sloop until we get uh, a better ship as a result of the English version of the Dutch Gambit quest. So for the moment, I'll be holding on to the sloop. Okay, nothing here.
I guess that's kind of it. All right, well, let's go and see what we have behind the doors. Hopefully we do get something nice. That would be good. Nope, nothing here. I'll take those. Quite a few silver spoons here. Well, I guess these guys were uh, educated enough to use a spoon, I guess. I don't know if I checked you, but I'll just double check. Don't want to leave anything behind. And even if they have stuff I don't want, I can always sell them. So that's, you know, that's a bit of extra cash. All right, that guy's down. So let's see what you have. I mean, my crew are uh, are more than able to deal with the remaining sailors. Not necessarily through skill, more through the fact that I have more of them. So they will win just purely based on their numbers. Ginger root, yummy. So on this level, obviously there will be no doors to check. They don't really give out anything. There are three chests though. And I'm always going to check them as usual. You don't really know when you'll find something nice in these things. So like for example, the hatchet will sell for a hefty amount of money. That's always good. Oh, that was quite annoying. It's always annoying that you spawn in the middle of this combat scene facing the opposite way of your opposition. And as you can see, even though there were four of them, they have taken out two of my crew. So they are quite hard, quite difficult. Um... NPCs to take out and I think that may be due to the skill of the sailors of this particular vessel that we have boarded Okay, let's see what we have here. Nothing. And last but not least, let's sort our friendly captain out here. I think I might as well slow it down just so I don't mess it up right here at the end. That just dawned on me. That thought just dawned on me. I mean, I don't think he's anything special, but... You know, the enthusiasm of getting this thing done and seeing the end of this battle might be too strong for me and I don't really want to mess it up. And obviously, do try and dodge his heavy attacks if you can, or avoid them if you can. One of the two, it doesn't really matter, as long as he doesn't connect his heavy attacks with your character. Otherwise, no. 
Otherwise, that will just complicate life more than it needs to be. So, luckily I found plenty of health potions. I have luckily <laughs> a ridiculous amount of health potions. So I can use these continuously. Obviously, I don't want to waste them all. I will need a handful later on during one of the quests. So, I do want to try and save up. And thank heavens for the pistol. Because I'm doing more damage that way to him. I mean, there are different ways of dodging attacks, including heavy attacks. But because I've got so much room in this cabin, I just get out of the way. Obviously, that means he doesn't lose the stamina because he's not connecting his hits with anything. But I'm not that bothered, so... As long as he doesn't hit me, that's the main, main purpose of trying to avoid his hits. Okay, not much left to go on you, sir. You could just roll over and die for me, but I'm sure you won't. J just give up, sir. Your ship is mine. Come on. And there you go, sir. Sweet dreams. Oh, what a surprise. I was hoping he'd have something nice on him, but why? Why would he? Okay, nothing in here. Let's see this chest. Uh, I suppose it's okay. Something is better than nothing, although... Ooh, yo, that's, uh, that's some nice stuff in there, so I definitely want those. I think that's it. Let's see, what did you have? Wow, okay. That is a big quantity of silver. Yeah. That's a lot. Wowee. Now I see why, why Longway wanted the ship. It's got quite a lot of silver on it. Anyways, I'm going to set up a captain on it, and then I'm going to go and sell off the stuff that I don't want. I'm going to go and put all of my crew on one ship. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the Corvette. I'm very tempted to sell it, just because it is a big ship, and it will increase the cost of my fleet if I do have a fleet. Whereas with the schooner, it's not all that bad. I mean, with a schooner, I can definitely survive with those costs. And we do need to make up 1 million pesos to save our dear brother. Well, to pay off his debt, more like it. But yeah, you guys know what I mean. And just by having a schooner, that's going to... A schooner? I keep calling it a schooner. It's not a schooner. It's a sloop. Yeah, I think I call it schooner, but yeah, a sloop. So just by having a sloop with a small crew is definitely going to be cheaper than having a sloop and a corvette in a fleet. So to start out, I'll probably just go with the sloop until we get the next ship. And seeing as our officers have gained a few levels and skills, I might as well invest their skill points in abilities that will benefit me depending on their role so like for example the uh, navigator will get skill points and skills that uh, will increase his navigation abilities so sailing is one of the things cannoneers will get abilities that 
will impact on their abilities to shoot and have a higher critical chance and stuff like that and do more damage to the crew, to the sails, to the hull, stuff like that. So, do I have anything? It doesn't look that way. So I guess we'll wait here for a bit until morning, then we will go and sell off all the things that we do not need. I am most likely going to sell everything off of the quest ship as well, apart from the silver, because that is why we captured it. So that, of course, means that I'm going to take the cannons off of the quest ship and sell those off for some additional cash. So we'll swap to our wonderful sloop here. We'll get whatever crew we can on it. I think that's the maximum that we can get. Let's see, what can I take on the sloop? What can I put on it as cargo that I do not mind carrying? Um, hmm. You see, the ship silk, that is good stuff for when you want to upgrade... your speed so that is going to come in handy for when i want to do the kalkush as we do need a fast ship to outrun it now the kalkush is basically the flying dutchman and i mean the real flying dutchman manned by the undead and all that good stuff and that is a mighty fast ship so i think i might end up keeping the corvette just for the ship silk. So we'll take off everything. What else have you got? We'll leave the silver there. Now the reason I put it on the Corvette, I put all the stuff on the Corvette is because I don't really want to make any mistakes and accidentally sell the silver. Let us remove the cannons off these ships. We're not keeping them, so that is going to help with money quite a bit. I am tempted to keep the Sebek. It's small, it's nimble. And as you can see, it packs quite a punch in terms of the amount of cannons and the size of the cannons. They're both level 3 ships, but I think I will keep the Corvette. Or no, actually... I don't know. This is, this is confusing. This, uh, um, I might end up actually keeping the... He said back, I'm not quite sure which one I want to keep. The thing with the Sebek is it's smaller and can fit into tighter areas. Not that that matters for anything, but it is smaller and it is harder to hit. And that is a big, big bonus. And it doesn't need as much crew as the Corvette does, so another big bonus there. So if I'm keeping the Sebek, I am going to want to sort those cannons out. We do want to fire all the cannons, not that it makes a big difference, but <laughs> I suppose it will provide some covering fire. And who knows, we might need it at some point. I doubt that, but yeah.
Okay, that's empty, and that's just about empty. I'm going to see if I can get all those cannons on board the Sebek. That would help. Brilliant. So that should stop and prevent any confusion in terms of trading. I only have two ships with cargo. I'm going to go back to my sloop. And have the Sebek as a ship that will follow me. Moist toy is at your service. Get a bit of room there. That's going to be helpful. Has this one got any room? Uh, there's nothing there. We do want as many chain shots as we can get. There's a lot of gunpowder. So I'm not going to throw that away. That is quite a lot of money there in terms of gunpowder so and all the red stuff here at the bottom is classed as contraband which we can of course sell into like some ports Everyone and sell them or you can use them for ship upgrades Alright, gonna repair all the cannons here that we can. Um, oh, this. I mean, ideally, I would want the Culliverns to put on the Sebek because of the range, so they do have a, a better range. But we don't really have that many, do we? Uh, so that's gonna. I don't know. I could leave. I could Creeps leave the like colorverns on and sell the rest of off. Can I buy any more? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. You've got colorverns, mate. That's brilliant. That is what I want. Oh, that's all I can carry. <laughs> okay. Well. I see what the problem is. So obviously the. Oh, I was trying to put them on the sloop. Jeez. Hold on a second. Okay, so sloop seems okay. We don't really need anything to do here. We have a ton of cannons that we need to sell off. The whole thing is I could buy the colorverns and all that good people. stuff, but the problem, or the thing that I consider a problem, own. is the expense of buying them all uh, will be quite expensive. And to be honest, I don't really feel like making such an investment at this point in time, not on this particular ship, because I won't keep it. So, this is just a temporary ship to carry all the stuff that I want to carry with me, such as the uh ship silk which will come in handy when i want to upgrade a ship i don't really have a warehouse at the moment so i'm gonna have to have a mobile warehouse Shapes are like kind of deal so Everyone that's that's what i'm kind of doing with the sebek
at the moment I'm just looking at prices for cannons and seeing what is what and how much it would set me back just just as an idea so now I want to Here's sell off the ships that I don't want to keep Everyone in my fleet and also, while I'm here, might as well repair the ships that I do want to keep. So we'll repair the Zebek and the Sloop and then sell off the Corvette. I'm not even going to bother repairing it. Or shall I? I mean, I don't know if that'll make a difference in terms of price. I'm going to repair them just to see, just to show you guys the difference in price. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. I don't really tend to repair the ships when I do sell them. So, we will sell that one, not that one, not that one, that we must not sell, very important, and we can sell this one as well. Not a very big advantage here, but yeah, still a bit of money. So it's time to go and visit our friend who gave us the quest and obviously carry on with the mission. Might need some crew here. I do have three ships in my fleet. I might as well assign my captains to their specific positions on the ship. So we need a cannoneer, I think. You are, um, I don't actually think I have a cannoneer. I guess that'll do for the moment. I think my cannoneer is on one of the ships that I've just captured, so I don't really want to assign somebody who cannot manage the cannons. That is quite an important skill on my ship, so let's see what have we got in terms of crew always happy to serve our customers here especially the ones who aren't stingy with the tips I think that should do for the second ship in my fleet and the reason I put some crew and I said I wasn't going to invest in it but I think I am going to especially if I have the Sebek as if it does not have a lot of crew the NPC ships will want to board it so we don't want any of that. No pull on my carbon. Get to the point, Cap. Okay, so we find out that we did good, and something has happened to Long Way, and all that, so we will continue with this, where we go to visit Long Way. Just a quick thing here, I do now have my cannoneer back. That will do. So we'll have to... Wait here for a day, and then we will go and talk to uh, Charlie here in in a bit. So you do have to wait a day, then go and talk to him. He will then take you to Longway. What's up closer to old Charlie Cap? There's a reason to clung your apples. So in this segment, we do find out that an assassin has tried to kill Longway. There was a fight on the street. Longway is now partly blind due to something being thrown in his face and all that. Nonetheless, he will take us to go and see Longway. And that is it. That is the intro into the English version of the Dutch Gambit. And I think this is also the most difficult part of the quest line, so having to fight those three ships to get the ship that has the silver on it. 
As usual, I will go through the dialogue slowly so that people who are interested in the storyline can read the quest. Also, I will do some reading myself so that I can refresh my memory with the tasks and the specifics of the tasks, as I do tend to forget. You know, there are a lot of details to keep track of. So now we just follow him to Charlie. I mean, I already know where Charlie's going to be. And I guess we will end the episode once we get to Charlie. We're not going to pick up the next episode, the next quest. That is going to be for the next episode. We have exceeded the amount of time for this episode that I had planned. Unfortunately, it couldn't be helped. It was a lengthy battle and uh, there were some decisions to make after the battle, such as what ships I wanted to keep. So over here on the left is the house in which Longway resides. You will only find them after you have done this particular quest for Charlie. I'm going to go in and he's going to talk to us for a bit. He's going to tell us where to go and find Charlie. So basically what room he's in. Then we go and talk to uh, Charlie. I meant Longway. Gosh. Anyways, I am going to get back out of the house and wait there and save as well as that is for the next episode folks that is it for this one i do hope that you have enjoyed it if you have please don't forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and why not check out some of my other videos here on this channel who knows you might just enjoy them until next time stay safe folks